one of Worcester's most beloved institutions recently announced its closing. News that came as a shock to many. But as Jared Bowen reports, there is a bittersweet end. This is the Great Hall at the Higgins Armory Museum in Worcester. A soaring throwback to medieval times, it has long been the bastion of many a boyhood dream and fantasy. With some 2,000 objects, the Higgins collection of arms and armor ranks among this country's best. It is a treasure. It is part of Worcester's heritage. Founded by industrialist John Woodman Higgins 82 years ago in the Art Deco building he built specifically for it, the museum's collection spans thousands of years, touching upon nearly every pocket of arms and armor history. But now, says interim director Suzanne Moss, the museum faces insurmountable fiscal challenges and will close December 31st. In fact, the endowment wasn't large enough if that, that's the point. Where, the where does the endowment stand now? It's at $2.9 million. I'm sure a lot of people will hear that number and think, well, that's... It, takes a, it would take an endowment of $15 million to run the museum. Unable to wage that kind of fundraising, Moss says the number one priority in closing the museum was to make sure the collection remained intact in Worcester. So after a flurry of negotiations, enter the Worcester Art Museum, which will receive the collection, its programming and endowment in a transfer of assets sometime next year. Think what message it would send out uh, about a city that is reinventing itself and at the same time it lets go a major collection. It would just catapult us back 10 years maybe, 15 years, to say, well, uh, Worcester's economy uh, uh, is doing fine, but unfortunately we didn't have uh, uh, the stamina to keep that collection. We have to keep the collection, absolutely. Long-term, Worcester Art Museum director Matthias Vasek says the collection will receive its own gallery. In the short term, though, highlights will be exhibited in the context of the museum's own holdings. We have a very interesting uh, uh, collection of Renaissance portraits. And if you look at the, the, the fashion for women, it looks like a uh, suit of armor just made out of, out of cloth. Uh, so cross-references there. And more practically, Vasek, who's still fresh into his tenure as director, says the move will only boost his museum's profile, which has long languished. We will be the only museum in New England uh, that has a collection of arms and armor, so it gives us uh, an additional uh, uh, edge. And the collection a home, if not a castle. And Jared Bowen is here. Well, Jared, as you know, we delayed putting, putting this story on there for a few weeks, and then we started hearing... Um, a lot of uh, pushback on this and criticism that they were going to actually shut the Higgins, and some people are really, really upset about it. Yeah, well, to some people, I think the larger population, it came as a surprise to people internally in the museum world and people intimately familiar with the Higgins Armory Museum. This is not a surprise. The museum was left with $17,000 when when Mr. Higgins died, and it's been in sort of financial arrears 17, for $17,000, oh. right? So for a long time, the museum has been in financial arrears. For the last few years, it's been eating into its an, an endowment, uh, which is not sound practice for a museum. Uh, the problem with the building... And, and this is the real tragedy. I mean, the collection is so much a part of this yeah, building. I mean, the experience is so much a part yeah, of the building. People say it like going, going to watch the Red Sox play, you know, in Gillette Stadium or something. Right. But the building was built in the late 1920s, and there was never sort of the, the, the infrastructure upkeep and the, the environmental control, humidity control yeah. that you need for this kind of collection. That was never done. And to do that, you need a, a tremendous amount of money. So I did make some calls today <clears throat> because we had talked to these two people a couple of weeks ago. Um, th there, there are people that are very upset about this, but the fact of the matter remains the trustees of the Higgins Armory Museum have voted it will go to the Worcester Art Museum. There is some talk about uh, waging some sort of financial campaign to, to maybe raise money for the institution. But in the weeks since this announcement was formally made, they haven't really drawn a lot of money. So, you know, th there were a few people. I wouldn't say it's a mass of people. There were a few people who, who you know, sort of rang the bells, but it's, it, it, it's not okay, going well, anywhere. Okay, so what will actually happen to the Higgins building? That remains to be determined. It is on the national. <laughs> it's on the register of national historic places. So the, it's not like the building will be demolished. I mean, it is one of the first Art Deco buildings yeah. in this country. So e e the building itself is historic. Uh, but the collection will go over to the Worcester Art Museum. And what they're saying at this point is, right away in the early spring of next year, they plan to have an exhibition mm -hmm. in their special gallery space. And there are talks of doing open storage with the.
the Metropolitan Museum has mm -hmm. in New York, where you can see the collection just as it's stored, not in a formal exhibition space. So there will be an opportunity to see it, and uh, it, it will it's be not a draw. Be the same. It won't be the same, but at least it'll be a draw. And, and I've talked before about how the Worcester Art Museum is trying to elevate yeah, its yeah. profile, and this will bring in the families and the audiences. Well, it, it is needs. very cool stuff. I have to it's, say, I mean. It's one of the look top at some three of those in the country. Spears and things, and yeah. it's like, yeah, I keep picturing somebody running at you. Know, with some, ah. <laughs> of course, you would say exactly. that. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try it out on you. I, I should. Right. I'll bring it back a spear for you next time thanks. to add to your collection. All right, Jared Bowen. Thanks. All right, that is it for Greater Boston. Tomorrow night, the movie makers say the state's film tax credit has been a boon to the local film industry. Now. Live stage and theater companies are hoping to get a tax credit of their own. And later in the week, former WCVB reporter Gail Hoff is here. What was it like? What was life like in the fast lane being the spouse of U.S. Senator Scott Brown? That and more this week at 7. I'm Emily Rooney. Thanks for watching.